I got like an 18 year old nephew and I think, do you not know how to say that? So we're at the Orange Box by JBL and we're joined by the one and only Youngin. Jeez. Big up yourself each and every time. What's happening? And we're here with the lovely side, aren't we? <laughs> but how you doing, young man? How's your day been? I'm good, brother, man. Yeah, good day. Good day. So, so Youngs, what was the first album that you bought? That first album? Eminem, I think. What, Marshall, Marshall Mathers? LP. LP. Yeah, I blood, think. Do you, do you know what mine was, blood? What? Nelly. Nelly oh, Bill. Oh, that's banger. That's a good one. Serious. Bangers, uh, underly, underly, mama, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Don't be silly. <laughs> Bangers. All right, what's your top three songs ever? Hot free Hot songs. Free. The ever. ones that, like, whenever you hear it, yeah, you cannot. Because with me, I've got, like, my free, and no matter what's, what. What's your free? Future Coding Crazy. Ooh. Ooh. Um, Meat Mill Wins and Losses. Hot free uh, ever. There's no, no rage here. No, do you know why? Because you see, with them songs there, they, they happened in a time where, like, I was going through a lot. So yeah. when I was listening to Wins and Losses, I was walking to work. <laughs> yeah. 15 minutes in the rain and I was thinking huh, what you're saying here is going yeah. to change my life yeah. and Michael Jackson want to be starting something oh wow so you're even throwing Mike in the man yeah <laughs> Mike, Mike is in top three of Mike course. should be one two three impossible I have to because you know what Mike yeah in the beginning stages of course you have to put every Mike but as I've grown older Future and Meek have been influential artists in my career okay cool fair so, enough in my life fair so enough, fair what's enough. your top three if you can pick Ooh, it uh, um, Michael Jackson Man in the Mirror um, <laughs> silly, don't be silly, don't piss off Michael. Um, 50 Cent, many men. That is your tune, isn't that's it? my that tune. Is your tune. Word for word, word that is his tune. 50, come on, that was, was the same, I think. Oh, you uh, Bluetooth, come on, that's the greatest Drake album of yeah, all time. Yeah, all time, Drake or Chris Brown, what as singing or just as an artist? Ooh, as an artist. Oh, 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 I'll be honest, see Breezy's all of that, but you see Drake. He's been consistent. Chris Brown's been consistent? No, he has, but Chris has had misses. Yeah. You know he has. I was going to ask, uh, what is yeah the best performance that you've seen live? I saw Drake at the O2. That was mental. Mm. Um, I saw Jay-Z at V-Fest. That was mental. Oh. Yeah. Like, it's just... It's See, just swaggy, yeah, innit? Like, it's just... What's your favourite performance of your own? Because I remember when you had your headline show, I think it was Highbury in Islington. Yeah. And that feels like... Like that felt like a moment that you you could never rematch just in that being your you know your first headline show. Mm. Yeah, Do you feel that like you've was, topped that. Yeah, I think when I done Shepherd's Bush Empire, I think that mm. was like that that night it felt like I you know like I wanted to do it again. I was so vexed I didn't do it <laughs> two days. I'm like I didn't want it to end that night. Um mm. yeah, Shepherd's Bush Empire, that's the first time my mum ever seen me perform as well. Nice. So it was like it was proper, like, all my friends was there. My whole family was there. It was just like, and it just went perfectly. Wait, so you didn't invite her to the first show? No, she didn't want to come. Oh. <laughs> my mum was like, I ain't coming to no show. Oh. But what's it like, though, seeing you, like, having your mum there and then she witnesses the crowd, like, going crazy yeah. for your songs? I think my mum didn't know where I was mm. until that day. Mm. Yeah. I think she knew, like, because people obviously have come up to her in the street and, like, people yeah. that she'd known. Yeah. But, I say, oh, your son's doing amazing. But I don't think she knew mm. until that day. What genre? If you could listen to one genre for the rest of your life. R&B. Oh. Really? You can tell. Lo this is lover, man. <laughs> lover, man. R&B, man. Uh, what, what would you think? The I would, rap. It, what, me personally? Yeah. I would listen to Grime. Or Dancehall. Grime for the rest of your life? Or, or dance R&B? Yeah. No, I'm with Youngs. Yeah, I would. I would R&B. Really. Dancehall is up there. How's, how's music for you? Because I would say you're an integral part of our scene. Um, been an integral part of our scene, but your journey, man, like talk us through like the story, your humble beginnings and how it started for you. Do you know what, what really made me get into music is just like being on my estate. Like, you know, when you're growing up, everyone raps, mm. you know what I mean? But I was someone that didn't even really like want to be on camera. Like I was just rapping to my friends. And it was like, I think I was getting sick of me rapping. Like, today. Was, was you one of those shy people? Because I yeah, had bars, yeah. but I never showed <laughs> no yeah, yeah, yeah. I just kept it on my own. <laughs> that was me, that was me, yeah. that was me. Like, even like I don't even have no pictures at back throughout school or anything. Like I just didn't want to be on camera, nothing. I just used to rap to my friends. Even like my first song I ever put out, it was like about my ends. It was just like a hometown tune. I just mentioned like all my friends and then it was all there. So it just made it comfortable. And then, yeah. Do so you remember your first lyric? Um, <laughs> yeah, I do actually. Go ahead. Um, I was probably, see my first lyric. I don't remember my first lyric. I remember the first time I went to studio 
um, I made a tune like it was another like kind of tune about my ends, and um, love the ends, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. love the ends. All I knew, <laughs> yeah, like, no, I was literally yeah. like. But I'm, I think with with a lot of artists, we see that the ends means like kind of everything for them. That's yeah, where everything sure. starts. And for you to represent your ends as well, like how how important was that for you and for the people around you as well, like for them to feel like right, Youngs is doing it, like this is inspiring me for for me for me to do it as well, because I yeah. saw you connected with Sneakball really early as well. Yeah. So two people from Brixton, yeah. like coming up. How was that as well for you? Yeah, it was massive. Like obviously Sneakball's like from like five minutes down the road, so we knew each other before before music. Do you know what I mean? But not like we didn't roll like that, but we just knew each other, um, mutual friends, etc. But um. Yeah, it was mad important to me because like nothing was really going on in my ends. And mm. like e even like growing in music, I always had to make it if you go and look through my videos throughout ten years, I always go and shoot back on the ends. Like people probably think I ran out of ideas or something. <laughs> but it's it's important to me. Like I shot a video last year on my ends in exactly the same place I shot my first video and I had the same people in it, but we're just all grown up. Obviously unless, unless I tell you that you wouldn't realise, yeah. but but it's important to me, man. It's really important to me. How did it feel to go from I'm rapping on the ends with my friends to that first time you went studio and you put on the headphones, you're in the booth. Like, uh, were you like, what do I do here? <laughs> yeah. Or was you like, no, 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 I know this, I got this. No, I thought, I, I didn't, I, I'll be honest, I didn't think I was sick. Like, I actually didn't think I was sick. Like I said, like my first actual song I made was about my friends and about my area. So... It was like, I feel like, I thought everyone was just gasping because it was about them. Like, it was like, oh, that's my name, don't know. Like, do you know what I mean? I thought that's what it was. But. Did you get any friends that was like, oh, bro, you didn't mention my name, blood. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> did, People you get, that... did you get friends who's like, you're not even that good? Um, well, there's some who's like, young no, man, I had a friend. Talk. I had a friend, he, he, he was saying that he taught me how to rap and stuff. <laughs> Why are you lying? I, I was like, no, you didn't, you didn't teach me how to rap. You just rapped uh, <laughs> just before me. You just rapped yeah. before me. You didn't teach me how to rap. But um, yeah, that, that's about it. Did you have any like influences that was like, oh, I want to copy his style or I like the way he's moving. That's that's the kind of like way I want to go. Um, yeah, obviously I had olders that um, that was doing well, like making money and stuff. And that always inspired me. Like they all had nice cars. Like from very early I drove. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to drive from very early because my olders had nice cars and nice clothes. And I was like, yeah, I, I want to be more than what, what my life is now. Like obviously I come from humble beginnings. So... Yeah, I just wanted more, really. That was it. And when you're looking at the people who inspire you and like you're listening to music that you like on the radio or in your yeah. car, etc. When you done that first track, how did you know it was finished? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't I didn't even get it mixed. I swear to you. Well, I you got, just put it out, demo. Yeah, like a YouTube beat, everything. Like I got the beat off YouTube, downloaded it, laid it. And that that's YouTube the, download. Up. Yeah, trust me. <laughs> trust me. Is it still up to date? No, I, I never made no money from it. So... Um, yeah, I didn't make a penny from it, so no copyright, please. <laughs> <laughs> and is it hard, like, having to then learn the process? Like, after you've put yeah, up your first YouTube one, yeah. then you're like, I need producers, I need to pay them, I need to pay the engineer, I need yeah. to pay the studio. I always say to, like, um, like young younger MCs coming up now, yeah, I'm saying, like, it's so different when I come through because you didn't have to make a song when I come through. Like, it was just about spitting. Mm. It was just bars, like... Um, a year into my career, I'd done an F64 and that was like the big moment in my career. Now you have to come with a song. Mm -hmm. So I went from doing freestyles and spitting, spitting, spitting to the game shifting and I have to make a song. I was like, I don't, I don't know. I, well, I have to make a hook. I, mm. I don't want to sit down, think of a hook. I just wanted a bar. Mm -hmm. And then you learn the art of that, making a song. And then when you do that, people think, oh, you don't spit anymore. It's just like... Yeah, you can't please <laughs> yeah, you anyone. Can't you can't win. Win. Well, that's can't so mad. As, as someone that listens to music, yeah, yeah, I don't have no bias towards artists. I'm just always like, I just want to hear the best. But I used yeah. to love when artists is doing like four minutes nonstop yeah. barring, like, because yeah. it's just like, oh, this ain't going to end. But that's what I I prefer to do. Yeah. Like, if it was down to me, I would just rap. I wouldn't, like, try and make... When I want to make a hook, I'll make a hook. But mm. now, like, like, when I think about making music, I feel like okay, this song, would it fit here? Would mm. it connect? And do you know what? Like, you overthink now. But. I think you've done enough solid rapping, though, to yeah. now get away with making songs. Like that, yeah. Th that but, it but do you know what? you got to remember, like, there's new kids mm. that don't know that I've rapped, like, rap, rap, rapped eight years ago. So does, like, it, does it matter now, though? Because the, like, um, the way that music is going, the sound is going, the charts are going, it's just about songs. Do you still feel like, no, I need to, the kids on ends need to think yeah. young and hard? Yeah, 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 I do, I do, I do, I do. I got, like, an 18-year-old nephew, and I think, do you not know how sick I am? Like, are you crazy? Like, do you not know? Like, 
But um, yeah, no, I, it's important to me, but I think it's a personal thing. I don't yeah. think it's really important in hindsight, as long as you're making great music that people can vibe to, you're good. <laughs> Have you ever like felt like, like seen an artist who you're a big fan of and you've just been like, damn, like, I can't believe I'm in a studio with this person or I can't believe this person knows my music. Like, Cause I've interviewed people and they're like, oh yeah, I was watching your video the other day. And I'm like, what? What, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. what are you doing watching my video? <laughs> yeah. I talk about racing. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, have you ever, has that ever come across to you? Um, yeah, Craig David, when I first met Craig David. Big Craig mm. David, you know. That was mad to me. Like, because I literally, from a kid, like mm. as a proper kid, I grew up just Craig David, probably one of the first albums I ever had, mm. China Bumps, oh, Superstars, China. like that was someone I I just watched on TV mm -hmm. religiously, like, do you know what I mean? And like I met him uh, three years ago, whenever it was. Did you I keep it cool? Was you just like, yeah, bro? Like I, To be honest, I was, I, was, I was ready to have a fan moment and say, <laughs> yo, can I get a picture? And he was like, oh my God, young and mad. I was like, <laughs> oh, wow. I was like, what? You know who I am? <laughs> like, there's all like, um, cause it was at a, at a show and mm. like, I was, I had a photographer with me and they all caught the moment. Mm. And it's just like, when I look at it now, I just look like such a fan. I'm like, <laughs> Craig, like, and then even going in the studio with him, like it was, it was very surreal. Like, mm. it was like, I'm actually in the studio with Craig David. And this is like l way into my career, but mm. it was still like a massive moment for me. Did you feel like you learned something in that session? Like, did you feel like it was like a proper moment for you to just take in like him and his process? And hundred percent, yeah, hundred percent. Like, it was it was like this is a person that's had hits for twenty years or even mm. uh, even longer. Like, this is this is a real sound man. So you see when you're going in there and he's just laying and he sounds how he sounds hey, on David. the yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, he, and he sounds how he sounds on the on the rhythm. It's just like. Did nah. you did you want to do his tick? Did you want to have a little sing? No, 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 no. I went to the chair, but obviously, yeah, that's great. I'm, isn't I, yeah, it? I even told him um, when I was in with him. I told him like, "Yo," I told him basically what my favorite song was, and he was like, "Swear, no, that's your favorite song." I was like, "Yeah," I was like singing it, and he was like, yeah. <laughs> "What song is it?" So I'm tuning off "Born to Date." Oh, mine was um Seven Days" with a remix. Which one was that? I have to play. It, it was mad it. like. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> hey, banger. That was mine. See, when you first made that banger, the one that you said I'm gonna release, like, what's the what's the thought process of listening to it? Is it you hear it in the studio and you're like, that's that's the one, or is it like you go into the car and you deep it there? What, what's it like? Because I've never understood when they say, yeah, I know it's the banger to it. I feel like I feel like it's crazy. I feel like I've only ever really, really had that once, mm. um, when I made my song Eight on that, and when I made that, like, when I left the studio, I was like this is it. And then I put it in the whip and I was like, this is definitely <laughs> it. I think we shot the video like two weeks later. That's yeah. how confident I was like, no, this is it. This is it. Um, it just felt like, I don't know where it was. It just felt so like right for the time, right for me, right for Sneakbo who was mm. on the song. Like it just, I don't know, man. It was Would you just, say that was like your career defining song? I don't know if career defining, but it was definitely that took me into the next stage of my career, I would mm. say. That remix was huge. I remember there was like two yeah. remixes, right? Yeah, two remixes. How do you choose who's going to be on the remix? Because at the time, that was like the tune that yeah. everyone wanted to be on. And yeah. then all of a sudden, there's all this pressure on you to pick the right people. Yeah, it And was you crazy. didn't just go with rappers either. Yeah, I know it was crazy. So basically what I did is I sent it out to like loads of people. And I got so many verses back. Cause at the time you don't even know if anyone wants to be on the tune. Like, so, and there's some people that turned it down as well. Oh my God, who turned it you down? <laughs> no, but, but. Tell us. You can't return. Really yeah, the beans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, got, got, I think, okay, yeah. the, the people that turned it down, are they still relevant now in 2020? Um, no, not everyone. <laughs> not everyone. You look, you are listening. <laughs> there, there are some people that are though. There are some people that are. One thing I love about Young, and you've had a sound there that's just been you. It's been something that's like, only we can relate it to you. How important has it been for you to just be yourself? And you know, there's a lot of artists that we see that kind of sound the same. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of songs that sound the same. Yeah. But how important has it been for you to keep it just being yourself? Yeah, important. I, I just think that's what I just go to the studio and do. Like, mm. I never go to the studio and think like, oh, I've got to do something that sounds like him or I will, I will do a song that sounds like a sound, like, oh, this sounds... This is a vibe. I'll jump. I'll jump on anything. Really, I don't like. If I see you on the Afro beats, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> if, nah, he's definitely got one up his sleeve. You no, got one. Afro do you know what it is? If I, I ever hear you saying anything in Yoruba, I'm out. I'm out. 
<laughs> no, I don't think I. I don't what? think I got that in me. I don't think I got it in me. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I was gonna say I do think though that the time at which you came out, the type of music that you was making that we just kind of called your sound, I do feel like it was just pop. Like it wasn't yeah, yeah. like that. You couldn't be like, oh, do you know now you could be like, oh, this is grime, this is drill, this is. It was just popular music from the get go. Yeah. And obviously now times have moved on a little bit. There's different categories for things, but I think you were kind of lucky in that you were able to just be pop. Like my music is popular. People yeah, yeah. listen to it. People buy it. And that's kind of that. Is pop a genre that you kind of are happy to be um, categorized as? What 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 are you classing as pop though? Eight or nine? Is that pop? Yeah. Like okay. it's, a, it's popular music, popular like a popular music. chart yeah, yeah. song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, even like commercial, commercial. I'll make a commercial, commercial song that's a banger. Like I listen to Ed Sheeran and that. So what, why would I not make, if Ed said, yo, you're going to go, all right, come let's do it. Like, yeah, you I, know, that, that, that's, that's a chart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. No, but I listen to that kind of music. Like obviously mm. it's not my favourite music, like, mm. but it's music that I listen to I'll be I so like. honest with you. I only found out what pop music was about a month ago. What popular I thought, music? I thought it just meant pop as in like, you know Top of the Pops back in the day? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. just thought it was like a specific type of genre, but really it is popular music. And I think our scene has now become pop. Pop, 100%. Because, because now like we're charting left, right and centre. Like you got to remember, these these young street rappers are going to places like Glastow and performing street songs to pop crowds. So it's pop music. Do you mm. know what I mean? But no one will ever say, oh yeah, that's pop because it's just hard music. Do you know what I mean? Sounds, it sounds moist to say. Yeah, yeah it pop sounds music, moist But really is, is, is. Pop is, is pop looking. Yeah. yeah. Pop, that's why I had to ask you. I knew you, you, <laughs> you knew what pop music was, but yeah. I just wanted to make sure I knew. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, I hear the words. Um, during lockdown, obviously it's really difficult to create yeah. How did you find that? Was it a good time for you to just sit and write and like discover new beats, new instrumentals? Or was mm. it like, do you know what? Forget this. Let me just wait until this period's over. Um, it was a bit of both. Like I was doing a lot of writing. Um, I've been through like different stages. Um, there was a stage I could only write at home mm -hmm. when I first started. I never could write in the studio. I hated like going to the studio and writing. I would always take it home. Then further on in my career, I could only write in the studio. Um, so lockdown made me get into writing at home again and like not being in a rush to write as well. Like, mm. like I would start writing a verse, write four bars and then come back to it. Sometimes when you're in the studio and you're on a vibe, you're like, I just want to finish it. Um, so going back to, and I feel like that's made me get back to being at my best. I'm not forcing, not saying I've ever forced it, but I'm not just trying to finish it. Like mm. I've got, I'll come back to that. I know I can, right now I've got like writer's block, I'll come back to it. So yeah, lockdown, is, it, was, it was good for me. Do you feel like sometimes when you overthink about a song or maybe take too long on it, that it kind of depreciates the value of the song? Um, I think it's a bit of both. Like, mm. I feel like we're in a time where you also have to have strategy. So sometimes like you can have a song happen so quick, but you can just try and drop it and nothing happens from it because there's no strategy, do you know what I mean? But something like Bestie, like, I think the vibe was so right and then... Bane was on it at the start and then I thought, oh, let me put Bane on it. It just, everything just, mm. it was natural, but mm. everything just went so smoothly. Guns, I was going to ask, like, have you ever, like, left the studio or sent a song over to, like, your friends and they've been like, ah, this ain't the one? No, when my friends, like, I got honest friends, I'm like, mm, yeah, bro, I don't know about that, bar. Mm. Like, my friends were saying, mm, I don't know about that, bar. And mm. I asked as well, like, a lot of time I'm in the studio with my brothers and I go, what do you reckon? No, no, no. All right, cool. Let's <laughs> that. How, how important is that, though? Because... Like Sai, si, I've known her for years and she's always got good people around her and I can see yeah. with you as well, you've had the same guy rolling with you for ever since I've seen you. Yeah. How important is that though? And does that keep you grounded with, with everything that you've gone through and everything that, you're, that you've achieved as well in your career? Yeah, I think, yeah, it's very important. And I just think to me, it's just been normal. Like mm. I felt like if I haven't had my friends around me or my same bubble, my same circle, I don't know if I would be here now. I don't know if I'd mm. still be, have the motivation to do this. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, yeah, I, like I said, I think growing up in an estate, you build a family. Mm. It's weird, like you build a family and it's like doing things without your family. Imagine having mm. Christmas without your family. Mm. It's not, it doesn't make sense. Mm. You know what I mean? So like your sound, we spoke about before how um, unique it is, but what would you say if you were to explain your sound in one word? What would you say it is? <sighs> Honest. Oh, you wasn't expecting that one. He took you off you my seat. I'm not going to lie. Like, honest, honest. I thought you was going to fumble on that. Honest to myself, yeah. Do you hate it when you hear someone's tune and you think you're lying? That's a lie. No, me and my brothers talk about this all the time. My brothers always say that. Okay, it's American rapper, but mm. I'm not going to say. My brothers like, but he's lying though. <laughs> I'm saying, but he's the hardest liar I've ever heard. Yeah. Like, But 
Yeah, sometimes some people that you know, you know yeah. when you proper know them, like boy. Yeah, like, like you didn't you didn't sell those the, things. Yeah, <laughs> well they say something mad like yeah, made a million. <laughs> no, Bro, you know I know you, but yeah. um, but I think I think with rap, I feel like a lot of things are, are exaggerated. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I think a lot of the time, if it's hard, what's the like, last car you rapped about? What that's that's released or that's not released? That's released. <sighs> last car I rapped about. I, don't know, I love I that he knows that he's definitely rapped about a car before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. He's like, it's there, but I can't I think every rapper has. Yeah. Have you upgraded the car since the last rap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cars. You did a little flex Ooh. on the gram the other day. Ooh. Loved it. Cars. Yeah, of course. I saw your cars. There's more than one. No, no, that, that went back to the rental company. I'll do oh. all three of them. See? <laughs> Honesty. Honesty. And on that note, we can wrap it up. Thank you, Youngun, for joining me, Sad Addison, and Harry Panero in the Orange Box by JBL. <laughs>